In this video and in future videos, we're going to be exploring LOMA index, formerly known as GPT index. In this video, we'll go over five different files step by step and explore its capabilities. LOMA index is a lot like LangChain, in, but it has actually many different index structures. Uh, in the future videos, we're going to go over and hopefully build some apps using LOMA index. It also has LOMA hub which has a lot of custom data loaders. I'll put both links in the description. So let's begin. In a nutshell, Llama Index is a project that provides a central interface to connect your large language models with external data by providing different indexes for vector stores. Requirements for this is going to be OpenAI Llama Index and for the fifth file, LangChain, because we are losing element from LangChain there, OpenAI. Let's begin with the first file. I do have my data folder with Stephen Hawking Wikipedia article in it. This is not the entire article. I just copy pasted part of it. We're going to turn it into a vector store. I also have a second folder with Ramanujan article. Stephen Hawking was a physicist. Ramanujan was a mathematician. So if you look at Llama first file, we are importing the GPT vector store index and simple directory reader, storage context and load index from storage. You do have to set your OpenAI key, so we check your environment variables for your OpenAI key. If not, you can enter it here and we'll set an environment variable with OpenAI API key as its key. Simple directory reader is pretty cool. It just loads whatever is in this directory with dot load data, and now we have our documents. All we have to do is after this, actually, if you look at the line 21, we can create an index using GPT vector store index from documents. And then we create index.storageContext.persist so we can write it to the disk so we can load it. But this is where the index is created. The reason why I'm using a try and accept block is because first I will try to load the storage from disk if it exists because it automatically creates a dot .storage folder on the working directory and then load the index from there using load index from storage. Okay, so we're going to try to load it, but this is not going to work because we don't have storage persisted yet. Then we are actually going to create the index and store it. So this is a better way of rather than using if else statements, use a try except block to first try to load it. If not, then create the index. And then we set our query engine as index as query engine. So then we can actually ask questions about that. I just want to mention a Echolive AI Academy. You can visit it at echolive.live from which you can search all my YouTube videos, 130 plus free AI coding videos. You can search and find exactly what you need if you're searching for GPT-4 or GPT-3.5. It's an instant search and you can actually find the right content, read the descriptions along with the code download links to Patreon. Feel free to use it. It's echohive.live. Let's run this line by line using Visual Studio Debugger. I'm going to come to the run and debug and click here. I could have also used F5 from my keyboard. When we run the debugger, we get this control panel and we put a breakpoint. We did put a breakpoint here. As you see, you can put breakpoints next to the lines. And then we stop right here. So we're going to do line by line execution. First, we check if we have an OpenAI API key environment variable. In this case, we do. So we skip this step. Okay. We get to the documents. We're going to load the documents. And now we have loaded the document. As you see, document is Stephen William Hawking. It goes on. You can actually see the details of your variables right here. You can take a look. Some of the text is visible here. So we have created the documents. So we're going to try to load it. Check if sorry. So we skip this step and go to the accept block because we don't have storage defined yet. And let's come here and take a look at our working directory. We're going to create the index. And now we have created the index. See, it says GPT vector index simple vector store index struct is a dictionary and then we're going to persist it and now we have a storage directory here with the text of the file the vector store which actually uses ids to match the text to the the vector embeddings and then here is the dictionary structure for each part as with the id of the index store this is just how gpt index implements it after that, we can ask it a question. We define our query engine, and then we get a response using this automatically default uses text of inches 003. 
Now we got our response, we're just going to print it, and it says Mr. Hawking was an English theoretical physicist, cosmologist, and then goes on to give us more details. So this is, in a nutshell, the most basic form of using the LAMA index, formerly known as GPT index. Let's move on to the second file. Second file does exactly the same thing, except here in this case, we are actually, we can actually create nodes and create indexes from nodes. As you can see, we are defining a parser with the simple node parser. We do have to import it from the node parsers from LAMA index. After that, we can say nodes are parser.get nodes from documents. And here you can see we can create the index both with the from directly from the documents or from the nodes. It is not very clear why we uh, read, need nodes, create indexes from nodes instead of directly from documents, but it is probably maybe to access each element separately. I'm not entirely sure about that. But here on the, if you come over to the third file. Oh, actually, I believe one of the reasons is because, see, Llama Index actually offers to be able to create from the same document different types of indexes. Nodes might be useful as far as that is concerned. Let's take a look at what's happening here. We are, again, do, load, loading our OpenAI API key, loading the document. We are trying to load it from the disk so this is all the same and this is going to skip and get to the accept part if you delete the storage here i'll go ahead and delete it we define a parser the simple node parser nodes is what we get from the documents then we define a storage context we are importing it this time up here storage context and load index from storage so storage context is storage context from default and storage context dot doc store at documents we add the nodes which we have created right here then after that, we can actually use the node to create two different indexes. One is a vector store index and the other one is a list index. Now, when I run this, they look pretty exactly the same to me. But as we go on further into Llama index, this is going to become apparent that this is a useful tool because Llama index offers many indexes like list index, vector store index, tree index, for example, keyword table index. And many more. I believe it also has graph knowledge graph index as well. So we're going to be exploring those in the future videos. By the way, all these files, as a starter files, will be available to my Patreon supporters. The link will be in the description. The fourth file is pretty interesting. In this case, we are going to use both our data folder and the data underscore two folder. The reason why I created two folders is because I am still using simple directory reader. We'll explore other data loaders in future videos. I do have Stephen Hawking in one of the directories and Srinivasa Ramanujan text in the other. So uh, he was an Indian mathematician who dealt with concepts about infinity. So what we're doing here is we are actually loading the both documents. Documents is going to be Stephen Hawking. Documents underscore two is going to be Ramanujan. Let's actually put a breakpoint here and run it. I'm going to click F5 and run with the debugger. Here we go. We are at this line. This line has an executed rate. We say the documents is currently just a variable. So once we initiate it, we see that our document has been loaded. We have done the same with the second document. See, this is Serenavisa Ramanujan. The first one says Stephen William Hawking. Now we're going to try to load it from disk, but we don't have the storage yet. So we're going to go to the accept block and we're going to define an index with an empty list because we're going to try to add both of these documents into a single vector store index. So that's why we are defining the vector store index as an empty list. And then after that, we have defined our index. We go for docking documents. This is for the first one. We are going to edit to that index. We have done that. Now we're going to go to the second one and add that. And after that, we are going to persist it to the index storage. And when we persist it, we have created our doc store. And as you see, the first one is Stephen William Hawking was an English theoretical physicist. But as we scroll down, we see that this next Ramanujan article has also been added to the exact same vector store. So now we can actually query over both. We set our query engine and then we enter a while loop so we can actually do multiple queries. I just ask, what was Hawking? famous for. Let me scroll this up real quick. And then we're going to print the response. We are using the debugger, so we're doing line-by-line -line execution. So he says Hawking was famous for his scientific work, which included the collaboration with Roger Penrose on gravitational singularity theorems. Really interesting person. Read up on him if you like. Now we're going to go, because we are using a while loop, we can ask another question. 
This time I'm asking what was Roman region famous for? We are querying the same index because we have added both documents to the same index. Now we print the answer. Roman region was famous for its groundbreaking contributions to mathematical analysis, number theory, infinite series, and continued fractions. So yeah, he was pretty great. Read up on him too if you like. So this is how it works. This is pretty convenient in such a few lines of code. And quickly, let's talk about the fifth file. Like I said, all these files will be available for my Patreon supporters. Link will be in the description if you want to try them out. In the fifth file, we are actually using an LLM predictor to custom create our model. Like I said, this default llama index by default uses the text of inches 003. You can actually change this. Also, you can set the temperature and whatnot. If it's in this line, LLM predictor, we are importing it here. We are also importing prompt helper and service context to be able to assign these. We're going to look at that here in a moment. Here we are defining the prompt helper, set maximum input size, for example, for token considerations, whatever the R max output we want, here in this case 256, and set maximum chunk overlap. Here in this case it's set to 20. Although I couldn't see this really taking any effect, but let me know if you find otherwise. Prompt helper is our, then we define our prompt helper with the prompt helper class we have imported here, given it the max input size, number of outputs, and max chunk overlap. And then we create a service context with the service context class we have imported from Llama index, and we give it to LLM predictor and the prompt helper. And then when we are creating the index, we do use the same GPT vector store index dot from documents. We give it to documents, which we have loaded up here, right? the first one and service context is the service context that we can just persist it and you can query over it as usual now i just want to point out something real quick here about overlap we haven't run the llama fifth file yet but on the fourth file we didn't use any prompt helper so by default by default llama index do use i believe some overlapping let me demonstrate here we are in the beginning of the index with the text elements and we see that at the end this is where it ends. Like it says London Taxi Cab. Let's do a quick search for this. Real quick. And as you see, this is the end of our first chunk. Oh, no, there is actually more after that. But in any case, see it says converted London Taxi Cab during the Hawking's father's frequent absences. And it has the exact same thing in the beginning of the second chunk. So it is automatically implementing some overlap. I was unable to change it with this max chunk overlap. So this actually goes to show that Llama, whoever, the creators of Llama thought that by default, chunk overlap was an important aspect of creating indexes. So keep that in mind. So this is about it. I hope you enjoyed this. We're going to be creating, I'm going to be creating more videos on Llama index and hopefully build a few apps around it. Also combining it with Langchain. Please let me know what you think in the comments. Feel free to make suggestions. I also created Echohive AI Academy at echohive.live. A link will be in the description. You can search all my videos, 130 plus free AI coding videos. You can take a look at the descriptions. You can watch them straight from here or at YouTube. You also have download links to the appropriate Patreon download posts, which you can find right here. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one.